Okay, so everyone, welcome to Bach's uh, Histories of uh, Cyprus. Uh, this is our um, second season, episode three. So what is uh, Bach's Histories of Cyprus? Uh, Bach's Histories of Cyprus is an independent public history project. Each month we showcase work that brings a fresh and exciting perspective on the past and bring you, the audience and listeners in direct contact with the people who research and tell the stories of uh, Cyprus, Cyprus with uh, fresh eyes. Uh, as I said, this is the second year we are running and we are very happy to see familiar and new faces. Um, if you would like to join our team or support our work in any way, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Also, please do like us on Facebook and Instagram. You can also visit our uh, website and our blog. Um, our website features the past uh, episodes, the recordings of the past episodes. Uh, sometimes it does take us a while to upload them, but they get out there eventually. Um, we can be also reached by email at historiesofbackchess at gmail.com. Um, how can you support us if you are interested in what we do if you find this interesting? Um, we are looking for people to um, join our team regarding our social media to help us spread the word out there. Um, and also, we are looking for people to help with translations. Uh, but in general, if you want to be part of the team and support us in any way, please do get in touch. Now, about today's episode. In this episode of the Bakhjes Histories of Cyprus, Bakhjes editor of Jan Gildirim Turk is in discussion with Dr. Serkan Taras about the technopolitics and history of the colonial infrastructure in Cyprus under the British rule through the example of the Famagusta port. Uh, before I pass it on to Okjan to introduce our guest, I would like to say a few words on our um, housekeeping rules. So please switch off your microphones. Um, we will have a Q&A at the end, but for now, please switch on of your microphones. I would like to remind you that the episode is being recorded. So if for any reason you feel uncomfortable with your presence being shared, you can um, switch off the camera or change your name on the screen. Um, this is an open space and we want to create a feeling of community. Um, so please do write in the chat a couple of words on who you are, uh, how did you find us and why you are attending. Um, also, this is a safe space, so we are very keen to have lively discussions, but we don't tolerate any hate speech. Um, and last but not least for now, be before I pass it to Okchan. Um, as I said before, we want to create a community. So if you are interested in, in what we do and if our episodes speak to you, uh, be part of the dialogue. How do we initiate this dialogue? There are two things we can we do, except the Q&A we have at the end of each episode. We have reviews from academics and practitioners, but we also have what we've been calling reflection pieces. So you have the opportunity to write a piece in which you discuss how this episode talked to you, your thoughts and your feelings. This episode meant to you on a personal or on a professional capacity. So. Um, if you like today's episode and if it has something to tell you, please get in touch. You can also write the reflection pieces uh, regarding our previous episodes, which you can find on our website and on our YouTube channel. And without further ado, I would like to um, give the floor to Ogjan Gildirim Turk. Yeah, Maria, thank you very much. So before our discussion, I would like to introduce our guest today. Uh, Serkan Karas is a historian of technology, and his work surveys the implementation designs of technological projects in either colonial or national settings, especially in Cyprus, uh, Turkey, and Greece. Just like me, he's uh, attending uh, from Athens, Greece, uh, where he has been living for 15 years, as I just uh, found out. Uh, today, uh, he is here for uh, sharing and discussing actually his uh, monograph, which was published last year uh, by the Cambridge Scholars Publication. The name is Constructive Imperialism, Experts and Crisis 
in colonial Cyprus. Uh, so we will be discussing about technopolitics in early colonial periods uh, in Cyprus. For the sake of clarity, technopolitics is a term that points at this hybrid world, this combination of uh, power, politics, and technology. Uh, but of course, I also need to mention that uh, the monograph itself, it goes well beyond the scope of this uh, webinar because uh, it starts from 1878 and it goes until the post-Second World War. It also includes electrification in Cyprus, so it's simply impossible to cover the whole uh, book. Uh, my first question would be uh, actually the reason why he chose to work on this topic and especially, uh, let's say, on this material dimension and how this material dimension, these technological projects uh, were produced. Because as we all know, we mostly read uh, the rise of nationalism in Cyprus, the community leaders or the party politics. This is actually a, a very genuine research. So I want to ask why uh, you decided to work on this uh, topic. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Okjan. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I thank Baptiste um, for the invitation. I also thank a lot of Okjan. I know how he has, uh, how much he has worked uh, for today. So about your question, I have studied uh, electrical and electronics uh, engineering. Then I chose a um, career. To, towards social sciences. So, um, well, and I, would, I always had this uh, interest uh, about uh, politics, especially state. Uh, so this research um, dates back to 2011, 12. Um, actually, it's a, it's a modified version of my uh, PhD. So um, during that time, there were not much uh, colonial uh, um, studies uh, about colonial periods, let alone history of technology. So um, uh, it was a, an open space for me to engage and uh, do this. And uh, also, I was lucky to find a scholarship uh, from the British School at Athens. So um, the whole uh, idea was to how can we how can I uh, talk about uh, history and politics uh, of the island without talk much talking about uh, this nationalist movements, um, uh, these uh, leaders, but also involve the agency of uh, materiality. How when people build things, they also build this uh, social and uh, political order. Yeah, thank you. So before going into details about these two projects that we will discuss, the first, of course, the Famagusta Harbour project, and of course, the other is the railway line. Uh, I would also like to see, let's say, you telling us about the first impressions that the British had when they first set foot uh, on the island. Like, how did they... Uh, perceive the situation on the island, uh, what did they found actually, what did they find when they first arrived? So, um, so Adri Kosmarnov had uh, written a very nice uh, very, uh, chapter about what did the British uh, think about, how they envisioned um, Famagusta, how they're imaginary about Famagusta. So, what I found that they came with this imaginary, this uh, Famagusta, this rich city, the center of uh, the Eastern Mediterranean during the uh, late Middle Ages. So, um, in the generally, what they found, if I talk about Famagusta, so uh, one reason that uh, British chose to. Uh, uh, to take uh, Cyprus from the Ottoman Empire was Famagusta Harbour. So, it's, so again, the name of the Famagusta Harbour was uh, in the British imaginary. So, um, like uh, when they went to Famagusta, they uh, um, made a survey about the city, and the situation was horrible. I mean, they, they could not set up um, a station there, uh, army station, because it was. Uh, 
uh, whole place was full of malaria. I think half of the population within the old town uh, was crippled from malaria. One third of the population is uh, conjunctivity, so yeah, they had uh, problems with their um, sight. So they found it pretty much unhealthy to invest in uh, any harbor project, etc. cetera. Uh, so um, from my point of view, I can tell about this pharmacist and also uh, they did not, one another reason that they did not engage in uh, building something in Famagusta in the early days was uh, about the taxation, the tribute. Uh, so Cyprus had to pay 90,000 pounds every year uh, for the British and the French um, banks, uh, the, actually the Ottoman uh, loan to British and uh, French banks. So uh, the colonial government uh, did not, the Cyprus administration, administration did not have the money to invest. So um, maybe I'll stop here and... Uh... So you are saying that from Augusta was kind of a disappointment for uh, the... <laughs> as far as I really understand. Uh -huh, for the British Empire, because they had, as we know, from uh, Varnava, and we are going to host him actually uh, next month. Maybe I can also have the pleasure right now to announce it yeah on the 14th and i'm sure maria will uh, write it on the chat the, the details yeah so you also told us that uh, one of the challenges that the british empire faced when they uh, set foot in from augusta and when they tried to renovate the city so you first mentioned of course the this situation on the ground the malaria this all sorts of diseases in the city and the second of course was the tribute simply most of the taxes that the Cypriots were paying were going to these uh, as we know these French and uh, British uh, bank holders and which really uh, not destroyed but kind of uh, block or limited all these hopes to renovate the renovate the city yeah yeah of course so um, uh... Well, another reason was the um, occupation of Egypt in 1880, 1881. So very suddenly it, uh, Cyprus became irrelevant for the um, imperial system mm -hmm. as well. So mm -hmm. there was also a geostrategic dimension uh, mm -hmm. uh, afterwards. So simply the island lost uh, in a way strategic importance. And from Augusta, yeah. I think it never had, but anyway, yeah, let's say that, yeah. <laughs> I think it never had that strategic mm -hmm. importance. Okay. <laughs> the other thing actually uh, is that we mostly think about the, the British Empire as the, like the one block, like as it is kind of all encompassing a mighty empire. But when we go through actually these uh, British projects and discussions about Fama Gusta, we actually see that there are different uh, layers of power. So maybe you can also tell us about like which actors were involved in redesigning from Augusta in 1878 and afterwards, like uh, what was, let's say, critical uh, there? So, so let's give the context why they decided uh, to invest uh, in the from Augusta Harbor, not only the harbor, the railway, but also um, some uh, um, uh, irrigation works. Uh, uh, so when we talk about late 1890s, um, the general situation is one of a crisis. It's, it's an economic, also a social crisis. So um, um, I do not go into details, but the British made a, a taxation very efficient. Uh, uh, so, um, what this among others caused in depth rural indebtedness uh, so many uh, peasants were uh, losing their farms and uh, their fields so they had to borrow from usurers there was no agricultural bank um, to give credit to the people um, uh, if i'm not mistaken uh, so there was this also this so this 
the, um, the solution of the traditional uh, structures as well, um, both in politics but also in uh, society. I think it's, it's the period of Asapulia gang, so we have bandits. Um, so there was this growing sense of a crisis, uh, both also Turkish Cypriot and Greek Cypriot elites had there these um, two factions. They had this traditionalist and the populist. Um, and upon this, also in Britain, uh, there was this discussion, especially I found in Parliament, they were discussing why do we have Cyprus? I mean, uh, Cyprus is not, it's not a white colony, but it's almost white. And it's one of the two colonies that had uh, Parliament. Uh, so it was a um, kind of privilege. So, and uh, so it was even the, the presence of the British uh, rule in Cyprus was even challenged uh, from, uh, from the London as well. So upon this uh, came Joseph Chamberlain. Uh, he became the um, Secretary of State of the Colonies. So he had this idea to, uh, make uh, to invest in uh, infrastructure works in the uh, colonies to create jobs in Britain and solve uh, some colonial problems and like use efficiently these uh, colonial um, lands and um, so uh, this was a colonial development program and Cyprus was involved in this to answer both this local crisis and this uh, metropolitan crisis about uh, British uh, presence. So um, the ideas how to do it came from both from uh, the, the local gov government uh, and, um, and the engineers. So, so we have this uh, co colonial, uh, co colonial office. Colonial office doesn't, as far as I know, I have encountered, doesn't dictate colonies how to govern, but governors are sent with a, a broad mission and they run the, the colony uh, accordingly. So in Cyprus, the local government uh, ordered engineering surveys and um, developed uh, this uh, idea of, uh, of these three schemes, like the irrigation, railway, port, uh, as a remedy for the crisis in Cyprus. Uh, so governor was uh, very active, public work department was uh, very active. And also uh, they had this institutional memory from the early days of the um, British rule, because uh, in the early days, uh, there were ideas about Famakusta Harbor, uh, but there was this um, uh, capitalist coming to Cyprus and uh, asking the government to like uh, to make these large consortiums like agricultural plantations and uh, build railways, build Famakusta Harbor, etc. So they also have this precedent uh, on how uh, they can uh, use this colonial development and welfare uh, program for Cyprus. So um, then how it works. So the, the local administration decides about this. The governor writes to the colonial office uh, and they ask for engineering surveys. And there's this crown agent system. system. These are agents in London who, um, who, who, find, who work with the colonies. They help in expertise, uh, loans from the London market. Uh, so these crown agents find uh, consultant engineers, consultant engineers come to Cyprus, they survey, then they propose uh, a design uh, according to the budget uh, of the government. And if the local government is uh, okay with this and then it's, it's within the budget allocated, uh, then uh, the process of construction begins. So it's, it's kind of um, a more localized process than uh, one would think. Uh, 
Yeah, we will come into that, uh, these local translations of these uh, British designs. So as far as I see, there's this, let's say, triple economic model, right? We have, first of all, this irrigation to secure uh, agricultural production in the Messaria plain, simply. And then we have this railway line to connect from Augusta to the interior of the island. And then, of course, we have this harbor to connect the city to the outside world. So this is, let's say, the basic, uh, the let's say, the basic model. And the, the government change, I think it came in, as you said, 1898, the Chamberlain the Development Plan. So when did the material interventions in Famagusta uh, start to happen? Like, and what kind of material uh, changes we see uh, in and around the, the city? So the, the whole idea, the British idea was, okay, uh, we, we develop irrigated agriculture and the whole produce from uh, I think area is uh, put on the railway and shipped to the Famagusta Harbor. And Famagusta Harbor also becomes uh, uh, like a central port, uh, uh, place of call for large uh, steamer ships like it's uh, comes a, a port of the trade in the Levantine area. So, so, so this making Famagusta the center, a central port of trade port in the uh, Levant uh, meant that uh, Famagusta needed to attract uh, steamer ships. So these were uh, new uh, um, high technology ships and, and they were large ships. So they were for uh, um, uh, long distance uh, trade. So ideally the Famagusta Harbor had to, had to be dredged. So Famagusta Harbor was abandoned. The, the island's harbor was uh, Larnaca. So um, had to be dredged and um, to, uh, there was going to be a part for uh, steamer ships, uh, and there was going to be a part for uh, like a quay for uh, sailing ships that do uh, this coast to coast uh, trade. So that was the idea. And this uh, port will be uh, served by a railway uh, too, in order to, to attract as much as uh, traffic uh, to the port. And I may be mistaken, but it, I think the work began in uh, 1901, these years. Okay, thank you. My next question is actually about the... Uh, I think it's 19, yeah. <laughs> 1903. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, no, it's... Yeah. And actually, you said that the, of course, the, the the biggest need is was to dredge the port. And if you check again our post, at, at the photograph uh, we can see the actual dredger which was uh, used to dredge the port and make it available uh, for the steamers. My next question is actually about the local responses. I mean, given the given this critical need to have a better communication and transportation system in Cyprus. Uh, what was the reaction of the Cypriots? Like, did they wholeheartedly, collectively support this material progress uh, on the island? Like, what kind of uh, reaction uh, did they give? I wouldn't talk about the need. Um, it was pretty much British needed to build this uh, infrastructure. I didn't come uh, with upon uh, local demands for that kind of uh, investment, especially for Famagusta. And actually, uh, the decision to invest in Famagusta uh, even deepened the crisis in Cyprus. Uh, uh, there was a huge debate in the Legislative Council because, as I said, the chief uh, port of uh, Ireland was Larnaca. So uh, trade was through Larnaca and there were lots of vested interests and these um, uh, elected members, they also had uh, vested interests in uh, Larnaca. So they didn't want to 
neither pay for the Famagusta hardware or neither create a competition uh, to their um, to their uh, uh, trade traffic. So actually, this the governor had to high commissioner uh, had to deal with uh, closely, and he was uh, like um, he declared that. There is a situation, uh, emergency situation in Cyprus. That uh, if we don't do anything about uh, Larnaca, that either uh, Britain has to bring uh, troops, or uh, and uh, get rid of the Legislative Council, the Glastonian Constitution, thus so changing the whole uh, uh, colonial governance, or um, do something about the finances of the island and satisfy the Larnaca interest. So it ended up. Uh, so uh, the high commissioner, uh, the, the engineer of the public works, and, um, Rosos, the mayor of Larnaca, some shipping agents. So they ne negotiated and uh, they, um, they uh, indirectly designed through consulting engineers um, some improvements at Larnaca Harbor in exchange uh, in the building from Augusta Harbor. So I talk a lot and I forget your question. So you. No, 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 no. It's, <laughs> it was totally an answer, yeah. <laughs> so apparently, the British uh, interest uh, and fascination about from Augusta was not shared by at least uh, some and powerful factions uh, of the of the Cypriot community. So there is, we can say, maybe this regionalism let's say about uh, coming from Larnaca, they were not supporting uh, the Famagusta project. Uh, are there any other motivations uh, or did nationalism uh, play any role uh, in this process, in this uh, negotiations? Mm -hmm. Yes. Nationalism, there was this touch of nationalism. It was pretty much uh, utilized. Uh, uh, for some populist uh, ends. So um, pretty much everyone was for uh, giving something to Larnaca. And uh, in Larnaca, they were preparing even, British was afraid of that the Larnaca interest would uh, raise uh, island by the uh, refusal to pay for the local uh, uh, fund tax. So this was the fund that was going to fund um, finance the loan for the Famagusta Harbor and the railway as well. So um, even um, uh, so as far as nationalism concerns, um, this Dr. Zanetos uh, was uh, Big name, then, then he was deported from Cyprus in after, after, after the first thing. Um, so he, so British started and British be, um, uh, finished the first war, so, so people could see uh, what was going to be like in Famagusta Harbor. So uh, Zanetos uh, uh, claimed that this harbor is very small and it cannot be, it's far away from uh, the British imagination of making it uh, like a central port in the Levant, attracting steamer ships. And, um, and, he, and he said like this, you are way, the way he framed it, like he was meaning that you are wasting people's money for a water tank. And this is going to have consequences. Um, so British really got irritated with these consequences uh, 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 remark. So uh, indeed, the design was small. So in order, so when one steamer ship uh, had to leave um, uh, the port, the whole port had to be emptied so it can maneuver and get out. So um, because the consultant engineers designed it uh, with uh, according to the budget. So they, the budget was small, so they um, uh, designed a small uh, uh, port. Um, 
language. So, uh, done. The, I think pretty much they this was this personal and regional interest that was more uh, on play rather than nationalism. Even Zanetos, um, uh, in other circumstances, was changing sides uh, according to to his interest and. Uh, Making alliances with uh, Greek Cypriots, Turkish Cypriots, or Larnakans and Nicosians, etc. So the actual construction hardly met the expectations, and we had, of course, oh, right. all, all sorts it of. Couldn't be, it couldn't be uh, more far, far away than, than the rhetoric, the whole rhetoric around what, what's the imagination, this uh, division of British for the. Could take only one steamership, also small. Then it was enlarged. So this, so two times. So for Larnaca improvements, British was so committed. They found funds, not loans, to improve. And uh, they also did the same uh, for the Famacusta Harbor and enlargement. So, so actually, they made uh, some changes, right? So, can we say that the Cypriot reactions were taken seriously, or I don't know, did they make a change yeah, on the decision making? This, this whole process uh, about Larnac and Famacusta is being uh, like uh, having been built small. Um, was due to this uh, local uh, resistance and reaction, uh, and um, and so it's even changed the, um, the governance of the island. So after nineteen, uh, I think the enlargement of the Famagusta Harbor in nineteen six or seven. So after nineteen oh eight. Uh, Cyprus began to get a grant in aid, uh, 50,000 pounds, so it can have, uh, this was direct uh, uh, funding from uh, London to the government, so Cyprus could somehow invest or uh, manage uh, such uh, situations, have, have funding to build stuff. So that was uh, actually like half, more than half of the tribute. That was pretty much important. Yeah, of and course. And this grant in eight state, uh, it didn't. It was not for one year. It became. Uh, mm -hmm. I I know. Yeah. That 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 must be a game changer. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Of course, uh, you already made it obvious, like uh, your uh, assessment about all these uh, projects. But uh, let me ask you once again, and this is actually my final question. I just want to learn your uh, final assessment, like of these uh, projects. So, as we know, like the historical sources, the British discourse, they always identify the British Empire with. Uh, positive like uh, rationality, modernity, development, and then you have all these stereotypes about the about the Cypriots, like they were, I don't know, like lazy, uh, traveling with donkeys and camels. So this time, when we look back, I'm I'm asking you as a researcher, but also as a as a Cypriot, maybe. How do you uh, evaluate, or how do you uh, see? the effect, the final outcome of these uh, projects uh, about from August like, uh, Was it a total uh, failure? Did they achieve uh, anything? Or like, do you believe that they were based upon a rational logic? Did they really take into account the conditions on the ground or even the needs of the Cypriots? Yeah. Um, yeah, so... Uh, the British, the, the Cyprus government, that the Cyprus government uh, developed from those days till the end a very technocratic uh, style of governance. So they pretty much uh, did whatever the engineers um, uh, proposed. So, but when you work with consultant engineers, 
these people, they work for their clients. If the client is a government and the government have uh, certain budgets, so they have to satisfy their clients. So they propose according to uh, the, the needs and also the capacity of the government. government and also according to the, the this general uh, ide ideologies about uh, technology and development. So railway, for example, was was uh, was was amongst the ideology of the time like that. So you build railway, so you have development. Um, so pretty much this was the British. So it was uh, far from uh, this. Um, uh, understanding about how people worked. Uh, so the railway had to be subsidized. Uh, the general railways, railways were subsidized, but people, what the British report that people didn't use. Um, so because people preferred to put their produce uh, on donkeys, they don't care about time. Uh, they have time and uh, donkeys, they don't cost. Uh, so they go to Famagusta, they leave their produce and uh, come back to their villages instead of paying uh, money to, to the railway. Um, Famagusta never became the central uh, port of uh, Levant, uh, but it became the ma main port of Cyprus by 20s, 1920s. The same thing, uh, the same imagination about uh, this vision about Cyprus was repeated during the decolonization period. Uh, they even was talking about Cyprus as Hong Kong. Um, so, an underlying racism, uh, this was very uh, like uh, outspoken uh, during the decolonization period was that British considered Cypriots, um, um, I had, how, how they, this was this phrase, this, they have um, developed uh, material instincts. So they considered that uh, Cypriots like the money. So if you create uh, economic development, they're going to be okay with us. Uh, that was, uh, this had a continuity throughout uh, this whole colonial period, at least uh, in these two big uh, uh, periods of uh, uh, infrastructural investment. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Serkan, for being with us. Now uh, we can accept uh, questions if uh, there are any, of course. Yeah. Um, regarding questions, there are two ways to make a question or a comment. Uh, you can raise your hand, your um, uh, online hand, your virtual hand, or if you would prefer uh, not to talk, you can write in the chat Q for question, and I can read your uh, question for you. Um, I think I can see Anna raising her real hand. So, uh, Anna. I'll unmute myself. Thank you very much. That was very, very interesting. Hearing and going back to the port of Famagusta, I'm sure you you know that we, have, we were very lucky at some point, some years ago, uh, back in the 1990s, um, to receive a copy of the archival photographs of Kuds who came to Cyprus uh, to do the work of the port. And um, we had an exhibition and a book published on the ports with these photographs. And um, I'd just like to comment on to the facts that really um, took away that vision that the English had immediately when they came was that on behalf of the British public, there were very many reactions because if the port had to be done when the first plans came out, uh, letters were written in time saying that, how dare you proceed and uh, knock down a part of the medieval 
uh, fortifications to build something like that. There was an uproar on behalf of the educated people of Cyprus, not, not anybody else, right? Um, so together with malaria, together with conjunctivitis, together with the fact um, of Egypt as well, um, I think this this also the the uproar against uh, intervening in the in the city of Famagusta as a medieval city that also uh, sort of made a halt to it. I also love the, um, the regional part of it. I mean, if you compare it today. Uh, Ayanapa has a marina and Paralimni wants a marina now. So um, why should uh, Larnaca, Famagusta have a port if uh, the port of Larnaca picked up after uh, Famagusta fell uh, after in the 16th century, right? So yes, definitely regionalism at that time. I don't think much nationalism at that time. Uh, very much reg regionalism and the, the interests of the people at that particular moment. Um, one has to take in, in, in consideration, especially the harbor as it was back in medieval times uh, with its two big basins and its uh, geomorphology, as we know of uh, the islands that sort of stopped um, the fact uh, of it becoming the big harbor that the British wanted. And yes, it was very small harbor by the end of the day. Um, there's a lot to say, and especially having gone through all the um, correspondence at the, in the archives and uh, the plans and everything. It's a very interesting story to see how uh, the port developed finally and what it looks like today. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you. Um, Andrea. Hi, thank you, uh, Sir Khan, for the presentation. Um, I really like now how Ms. Marangu mentioned something from contemporary technopolitics, let's say, of Cyprus with the two marinas. And, um, and this was really uh, something I was thinking already, how maybe we can use history and the analysis of what uh, the technopolitics were at the time of the British colony to see maybe how this has influenced perhaps the uh, the new government in power, the Greek Cypriot uh, government uh, uh, and, and with certain uh, problems in, in, in the power imbalances with Turkish Cypriots uh, in, in the beginning of the 1960s and how the technopolitics maybe reflect uh, again certain power imbalances are you asking if i know of episodes or regarding uh, this issue well if you have any opinion about how the the way that the governance of the of the new administration was um, set up in a way that embedded these technopolitics of governing through infrastructure let's say and involving certain power imbalances. One thing, um, the Republic of Cyprus um, did was to continue all of these uh, relations uh, with the consultant engineers they had, the Cyprus government had during the colonial time uh, up, up until 1980s. And um, now I work uh, like this more recent period and I see kind of a similar uh, attitude about uh, engineering proposals and uh, this technocratic um, uh, uh, framings of solutions and problems. So it, it, it also suits uh, the people that govern to base their decisions on uh, this uh, on uh, technical uh, people, so they can legitimize uh, their decisions. Um, so it will be very nice to study, uh, especially the, the first 10 years of the uh, uh, Republic, uh, studying especially this, um, uh, water and uh, energy issues. Um, which uh, 
I imagine, I know somehow, uh, but uh, there's this another type of technopolitics uh, was at play and um, like uh, the meaning of uh, uh, connection to, to the water network or the electricity network was different for Kisipios. Didn't allow us, for example, to be connected to this network. Uh, so um, uh, during the colonial time, this separation between uh, these two communities regarding uh, uh, technopolitics was not so much. Um, maybe, maybe during electrification, the Enosis movement was very uh, effective, but. Uh, but like the um, the first uh, ten years, it's I think uh, the main character. And also the, for the new republic, this um, when British left, they left some um, some plans and some promises uh, about some infrastructures, and the especially Macarius uh, used this to get credit, etc., from the British. I don't know if I answer your question yet. Yeah, super interesting. Thanks. Um, thank you, Andreas, uh, for the question. Um, uh, there is a question on behalf of Alexia in the chat. I will read it. Um, thank you for the very interesting talk. You mentioned that the British had discussions about Cypriot's race. Uh, for instance, whether they are white. Could you possibly elaborate on that? Did they reach a conclusion? Smile. <laughs> well, I, I didn't study this, but uh, again, I think this is a good question to ask to Adrikos Varnava. But uh, their whole problem about Cyprus was based on this uh, on this uh, contradiction that uh, they never considered Cyprus like an African uh, colony or a Caribbean colony. This whole, um, the ancient Greek uh, past. Um, so it was in the middle. So uh, there was, I've never encountered if, uh, like discussions whether Cypriots are white or not. But lots of comparisons with uh, Egypt, I encountered this. Um, Sertan, would you, if I wrote this down correctly, you said a colony that was almost white. So would you say that, is that correct? So uh, I, I my, my opinion, I think it's yes. not quite, yeah. It was not the right. It was um, those parts. Cyprus mainland, as far as I understood when I was uh, studying, was Egypt and the Syrian coast. Mm. If you consider these uh, regions and people white, then uh, Cyprus were white. Um, so, drawing on this, my my question or my I don't know my comment would be. Um, maybe Cyprus is more of a paradox rather than a contradiction because unlike other countries, other settings, it's not so easy to um, place the, to name the, the race, to name, to identify how white or non-white we are. I don't know if this makes sense. So in my head, it's more of a contradiction, sorry, more of a paradox of an empuzzlement rather than a contradiction. Mm -hmm. But there are other places like Cyprus in, within the British. Of course, of course. Um, um, I think Malta, I'm not expert about, but like the Malta is the first example. Uh, Corfu was pretty much, uh, Corfu was also British uh, at some point. So, thank you. Yeah. Um, just to get a few more questions, um, Ogjan is raising his hand, and also I, I believe that Firuzan would like to make a question. Ogjan, is, is your question related to the previous discussion? Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment actually. Firuzan is not uh, going to ask. 
I just lower my hand to provide some space. Firuzan, are you? Uh, I was just uh, going to uh, say that this is um, this um, this race issue. Um, it, I think it's a, it's a very sensitive and in a way dangerous. Um, I'm not saying uh, unnecessary, but kind of a dangerous discussion. And um, I think um, it's it's very top down um, discussion in a way by British. Um, imagine uh, a, a colonial the colonialists um, having this discussion about the colony, whether they are white or not. And it feels like it's very, um, yes, top-down um, um, uh, kind of uh, approach. And um, and as you said already, there are other examples rather than Cyprus, the different colonies, um, like yeah, core for Malta. So, and I'm I'm not sure that if there is a, like an an, an academic um, um, discussion about it. Or is it just uh, um, the thing that the, in, at that time British uh, just uh, trying to um, make some assumptions? So I, I don't know if you know any academic um, publishing or other things about this discussion. So if you know anything, it would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. How this this was a question to me. I didn't get it. I mean, it's a it's a general question, and not like every, everyone. If you know anything like more like academic publishing or discussion about this, you know, race issue. Um, I'm just curious about it because yes, it's also a bit sensitive. I'm, I don't know. I'm out of this field, so I, I've said pretty much what I know about it. So it's either me or Loizos. <laughs> Loizos, I've already talked too much, so maybe you can, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was wondering, Zakan, if there was a when you say um, part of why they, they, there was discussion about fixing up the port, fixing up the, the town, uh, was to manage a, a crisis, an economic uh, and social crisis, if the arguments were mostly economic or if there was a, a moral element to all of this, as in we are going to fix that place and the people are going to be better people, for example. So if, if there was like this reformist, moral reformist argument. Yeah, it was uh, like uh, no different than uh, in many other case, colonial cases that it came with this rhetoric of progress and uh, uh, bringing this um, the amenities of the modern world to, to the Cypriots. So it was this progressivist uh, rhetoric. It was definitely like economic development with escorted with uh, this rhetoric. It was this part of the ideological basis to, to I mean, to colonize the place. So it came automatically. Thanks. Can do you still have a question? Actually, it's not a question. I was just I was going to make a comment, but now I'm just going to make two comments, both of them very short. So yeah, I think Firuzan's question is really important. Uh, there are actually some academic material about this. We can talk about it later, Firuzan. But of course, uh, we cannot see these. Uh, race issue or these race relations as a just as a you know coming from the top as a colonial uh imposition because as you know the ottoman cyprus venetian cyprus they were not free of slavery so there's always color there's always race the other thing is that i found uh, and this question and serkan's uh, answer uh, very important 
because uh, I believe that simply from Augusta's tragedy, at the very heart of it is derived from the community's failure to share the space. And I'm also working on uh, actually from Augusta, I was in Istanbul during uh, in November. I was going through all these uh, documents. Uh, there's a certain folder in Istanbul at Ottoman Archives, which contains thousands of documents about from Augusta. There I saw actually how Cypriots got together in 1860s, starting from 1860s, and they were pressing to have a port project. And they were pressing this need because they made an agreement about how to share the city. Like this is, this is, I think this, there lies the gist of the issue. Because as long as, like we don't, we are, we, we are not agreed on sharing the future, right? The history will never serve the, the need that we have, unfortunately. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Loisos, and then I'll go next. <laughs> uh, another quick one. I mean, if I mean your your book is all about techno politics, but uh, wondering whether there are links with also biopolitics. Uh, uh, you create a port, and then you also limit migration in some way. If you looked at any of these, or population movements, or demographics, or uh, how many this, how many that, if if you looked into this kind of connections and... Mm, not so much. Uh, just generally, I studied this design and construction periods. So I, I, I didn't study how it was used. Okay. Mm -hmm. cool. uh, um, some concerns. Um, in, so when they were... Uh, in the early days, so one concern was that if the port has a community to support it. So um, the British, according to the British, the Turkish Cypriot community in the old town was um, was not so industrious. Or, but uh, fortunately, according to the British, there was Varosha, which had this. Um, uh, how do you say this um, trade activity, more lively, uh, livelier trade activity? Um, I can, but biopolitics now no, I haven't encountered it. Anna? Could you elaborate more whether um, those documents you found after the 1860s concerning a shared project or um, as, as a lot of things happen between Turkish Cypriot and Greek Cypriot around that period, um, was it particularly for Famagusta and a particular quest for uh, uh, refurbishing the harbor and sharing it? Exactly, yes. It's a particularly uh, from Augustonian, from Augustonian, yeah. Uh, from... Parochotes or from Augustians? Uh, both, actually. Both, okay. Both, yeah. And both decided, uh, like, which neighborhood will be the Christian one, and yeah. Wow. Well, can yeah, you elaborate? Sure. Let's put up a Bakshe story on that, can we? <laughs> maybe, maybe in a few years. <laughs> <laughs> maybe in a few years, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> okay. Because right now I'm doing my research, so I can't I can't really uh, talk about all the details. I can't really uh, put it uh, in a circle context. I was just there in November, and I'm just going through the. You better the... hurry up because as things stand, that would be something that would be really helpful for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very so... much. Speed Thank up you your, uh, <laughs> so you can help everybody. 
Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, no pressure. Now everyone is, <laughs> is waiting for your thesis. Um, I would like to make a, 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 a comment. Um, I would like to, to go back to Andreas's question about the implications of past technopolitics on today. And I think this connects to Lezos's question as well about whether building a harbor also means um, improving people. Um, as a history educator, I always make this question, okay, what is the implications of today? Why is this useful today? And Serkan, you said, um, that uh, when you build a railway, you build development, or you think you build development. And I think, again, this is very useful for us today to think um, what is development and what do we do with it? I mean, many times we have the discussions um, of uh, who is building for whom and whether people are being consulted. Um, when I was abroad, one of the things I was uh, um, shocked with was the fact that in our neighborhood we kept receiving letters about being consulted about um, the the park changing on the or the roads and there was this really um, feeling of community and the community being asked something that I never felt here in Cyprus I not only have never felt I'm, I'm, I'm asked I feel I'm ignored that the people who built for us don't take us into consideration so uh, for me, those, this was a very useful example of like drawing to the past and think of the uh, present. And a second uh, reflection, um, when I did my PhD research, um, I, I've used the example of uh, building the port of um, uh, Famagusta. It was, um, it was part of my material and the students I've worked with were very, shocked by the fact that there was really a discussion of what to do with Famagusta because the, the idea, the myth really is that Cyprus is at the center of the universe. Uh, everyone has always wanted us and people wanted us without reservations. You know, we were um, the diamond of the Mediterranean. So they were quite shocked by the fact that there were discussions, there were debates, there were... Um, um doubts and i don't know if you have any any further comments in relation to that um the last, about the last one you're talking about the first days of uh, the british mm -hmm. right? yeah well, uh yeah it's okay they discussed a lot about cyprus british parliament um, but um quickly faded away, but about your first uh, remark, so I would argue, and many others will agree, that the reason that we talk about development, that we use the concept of development, is uh, because of these stories. Because um, like uh, investing at some place, hoping to uh, get uh, economic uh, and social returns. This concept was not there. So the whole idea, the whole concept of development came from this colonial experience. And uh, I would argue this first colonial development welfare act and uh, this projects of Famagusta and uh, railways, Cyprus railway was like one of the first uh, uh, applications of this, this the place where this uh, idea got uh, began to uh, the, to have a life. So, um, okay, of course, this is the, the top to down, and about your how we design uh, stuff that we use, it's it's still very problematic. Despite those uh, deliberative uh, processes in some European places, still uh, um, uh, the decision-making is 
is I think very far from uh, from the users. Maybe we. It seems it's time for um, the football match, unless if someone else wants to raise a question, make a comment, suggest further topics of discussion for next episodes, like uh, Mrs. Marangudi, we are all uh, ears. Um, before we close, I would like to uh, thank uh, Dr. Serkan Karas for being with us today. Um, and of course, our editor of Jan Yildirim Turk. Um, as uh, already announced, uh, we are extremely happy and we hope you'll be as excited as we are uh, for uh, our next episode. We'll have with us uh, Dr. Andrikos Barnava um joining all the way from australia so because of that we'll slightly change the time of the episode uh the episode will take place on saturday 14th of january write down note down the day at uh two o'clock i believe if that's uh correct and he will be discussing with uh he will be in uh, conversation with our uh, Bachchess editor Nur Chediner. Uh, on experiencing the colonial rule, Cypriots under the British administration. Uh, of course, we will uh, remind and announce on Facebook and on Instagram. Again, please do like us on Facebook and Instagram. Please uh, stay in touch. Uh, thank you, Sir Khan. Thank you, Chan. Thank you, everyone. And see you in January. Thank you, everyone, for listening to me. Bye-bye. And Thanks, thank Sarkhan. you for joining us. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to have you with us.